All right, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time you're tuning into this video, just make sure that it is good. My name is Game Boy Rob, and today we have yet another release of new cards. This should be happening pretty much every day until uh, the day the new set comes out, which is in like almost two weeks, week and a half, a while. A little longer than that, a while. That's a while, it's gonna be a while. We're gonna be doing this for a while. But yeah, with, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. I see that there is a new tweet from Riot with some new cards. Let's see what they're all about. All right, Beyond the Bandlewood. Okay, we've got three mono bandle cards, but they look very Fizz related, but they look very related to Fizz. All right, first one is Prank. One mana, focus speed, mono bandle card. Rank. Pick one of two non-champion cards. Wait. Pick one of two non-champion cards in the enemy's hand or deck and prank it. Wait, what? <laughs> what does that mean? What does that do? Oh, okay, this isn't even a card. This is not a main deck card. We've got Banana Me. We've got Benenemy, which is how you get pranks. Four mana, four, three. When I'm summoned, create two pranks in hand. Okay. So four mana, four, three, create two pranks in hand. Prank says you prank it? Do you just turn it into a prank? I don't understand. I'm not understand. I, I don't understand what it means to prank something. Maybe a future card will tell me about it. All right. Then we've got a two mana, two, two, mono bandle yordle. Play, manifest a spell from your regions that costs three or less. Okay, so this just sort of invokes a spell from your regions, which can only be two. Even in, even in Bandal, that means it can only be two regions. It's not like, you know, Bandal doesn't allow you to put more than two regions in your deck. So this will only give you a spell from your regions that costs three or less. That that seems pretty good. This one, this one I like, this one seems pretty good. Nothing too crazy. But depending on which regions you're in, you can get some pretty good spells off of this. So that's cool. All right, next up we have Kelp Maidens. Two mana, two one, elusive. Next is Strike Creedy, Prank in Hand. Okay, we're getting more stuff to do with this Prank card, but I still don't exactly understand what it does. Okay, we'll keep going, we'll keep going. Create a Prank in Hand. So this is two mana, two one, elusive. Uh, meaning that this dies to stuff like parlay and make it rain, but it requires to hit the nexus in order to get any value. Prank? Prank better be pretty good or else this is like, like this is a high risk card. You're paying two mana for a one health unit. That has never worked out. <laughs> that like only gets value if it does something, if it strikes. A two mana unit with one health that requires striking the nexus to get value. That's a big ask. That is a big ask, right? It's a huge ask, so we'll have to see what Prank does. Even if it's elusive. That's, uh, that's hard to do. And then Otterpus is a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Okay, a 0 mana 1-1 one, one with a tune. Okay, so, uh, a 1-1 one, one with a tune. A 1 mana card with a tune, which means it costs 0 mana effectively. And this is when I'm summoned, create a Prank in hand. Prank costs 1. So this creates a Prank, which you then play, right? Because you have the... Because you have the mana, because you played it, because it had a tune. Okay. We've got Shark Trainer, which is apparently a Yordle and looks an awful lot like Fizz. So that has interesting lore implications. Shark Trainer. Seven mana. Finally, we have a, a, a non mono bilge water card, or non mono bandle card. This is a bandle bilge card. Shark Trainer. Seven mana, six, six, a tune. It's still a lot of mana. When allies attack. Spend one spell mana to summon an attacking short tooth. <laughs> oh, wait, when allies attack. <laughs> uh oh, spend one spell mana to summon an attacking short tooth. Okay, adorable. I like short tooth. That's that's great. It's just long tooth, but it's got short teeth. Fantastic. I love short tooth. Um. Shark Trainer sure does cost seven mana. It does have a tune, but like this seems like 
The card, when it says, al it, it says when allies attack, spend one spell mana. So like, immediately that makes me think of either Scouts or Azurelia. But this is Bilgewater Bandle. Wait, this is Bilgewater. You can't put this in Azurelia. Are you gonna put this in, are you gonna put this in MF Aurelia? <laughs> no, like that deck doesn't exist. So I guess it's like a Scouts card? Like you scout? The fact that this actually costs spell mana, I don't understand why this costs spell mana, right? This is a seven mana card. Why do you have to spend extra mana to get short tooths, right? For for seven mana, I should just get these every time I attack, right? Like you don't have to spend one mana on, you know, every time you attack, if you have a zero on the board, right? If you have a zero on the board, you don't have to spend a mana to make a, a sand soldier. When, Di when Emperor's Dias is on the board, you don't have to spend a mana to make a, a sand soldier. Why do I have to spend a mana to make this? I don't understand. I don't understand why we have this caveat. And I think it will kill the card. I don't think I don't think this card would even if this card said, you know, had that had that little bit removed, where if, even if this card like didn't require you to spend mana, I think this card would still be pretty bad. And the fact that you need to spend that mana just to shaman, just to get the value out of it. I don't see why I'd bother. I don't see why I'd bother. All right, and these these, these are the last three. Last three. We've got Trixie Tentacles, which is a fast speed spell. Two mana fast, Mono Bandle again. Short Tooth, by the way, is just Bandle. He's not Bilgewater, which is you know irrelevant but interesting. Trixie Tentacles, two mana fast. Your opponent discards their lowest. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Your opponent discards their lowest cost card. Wait, that's just Hunt the Week. No, it's not just Hunt the Week because Hunt the Week hits. Uh oh. Hunt the Week can't hit champions, right? Hunt the Week says your opponent discards their lowest cost follower, right? Isn't that what Hunt the Week does? And, and Hunt the Week is also slow. So this is like massive Hunt the Week power creep, which, you know doesn't mean anything because Hunt the Week is like one of the worst cards that have ever been that has ever been printed in this game. But this is a massively power crept Hunt the Week. Your opponent discards their lowest cost card at fast speed. Does the fast speed mean anything? I don't think I don't think this card being fast instead of slow changes much. This card's their lowest cost card. This, but however, the fact that this doesn't just hit followers is a huge deal, right? I don't know if the fact that this is fast matters, but the fact that this doesn't say follower, it says card, absolutely matters. Well, the problem, one of the biggest problems with Hunt the Week is that when your opponent has a small hand, that's the, 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 the a card like this, a card like Trixie Tentacles or Hunt the Week gets is is at its strongest when your opponent has a small hand and you can make them discard that last card that they've been saving, right? And Hunt the Weak, since it only ever hit followers, the, the smaller your opponent's hand gets, the more likely that they ha don't have a follower, right? They might have like two champions in a spell or two spells in a champion, right? And zero followers. So you would end up playing Hunt the Weak and your opponent would just not discard anything, and you would just be sad. You'd be like, oh, well, I just wasted two mana and a card and did nothing. And your opponent's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> With Trixie Tentacles, you'll never have that problem. You play Trixie Tentacles, your opponent has, like, two cards left in your hand, in their hand. You play Trixie Tentacles, their last card's gone. Or, 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 or one of those two cards is gone. And... I lied. The fact that it's fast actually does matter, because if your opponent's on, like, two cards, and one of their cards is a spell. If they play a spell, you can respond with Trixie Tentacles and never give them like a chance to like play their unit. Although you could do that anyway, because like you can't respond with units ever anyway. This is this is probably a decent card. Unlike Hunt the Week, this could see play. I don't know if it will. I don't know if Bandle wants to do that. I don't know what kind of deck 
or what kind of meta wants to make your opponent discard their lowest cost card consistently. I mean, you could like get the ghosts out of Sivir's hand. You still get information, right? Because like if you play this and your opponent discards something expensive, you know that like everything that costs less than that is not currently in your opponent's hand. Oh, this is a very interesting card. This is a very interesting card. All right, we, we need to keep moving though. We need to keep moving. We'll come back to this. Shell game. Five mana burst, mono bandle. Shell game. Refill your spell mana. Okay, so this sort of costs two. Give an ally elusive and plus one, plus one this round. Hmm. Refill your spell mana. So this is this is very much a fizz card, right? I mean, I guess these are all fizz cards because they all are water themed. Refill your spell mana, give an ally elusive, and plus one, plus one. So this is like... This is like a Sumpworks map that only lasts for a round. But it, but it gives a buff, right? It gives a plus one, plus one buff for that round. No, I don't think you want that. At least not most. Most, most decks won't want that. Right? Because, like, if you're running an elusive strategy, most of your units are already going to be elusive. I mean, I guess you could give Zed elusive. But, like, this still, at best, this still costs two. And right now we're seeing a lot of play with Ghost. Like, okay, I say that, but we're giving, we're seeing a lot of Ghost play, right? And this, this card is basically Ghost, but you have to use it first, right? Since it costs five, you can't, you can't tap below five mana and then play this card, which is a big deal, right? Even though it only effectively costs two, you still have to have five mana in order to play it. For Ghost, you only have to have one mana to play it. So, like, that's a big deal. That's a big difference. If you play, you know, if it's round seven and you want to play Sivir, Ghost, Flurry of Fist, and you, if, if it's round seven and you have one spell mana, like, and you're playing Sivir, Zed, Akshan, you can play Sivir, you can play Ghost, you can play Flurry of Fists. You can't do that with Shell Game, right? With Shell Game, you couldn't even play Shell Game. Let alone Shell Game and Flurry of Fists, right? You just, you could, if you had, if you wanted to play Sivir into Shell Game, you couldn't do that. That requires nine mana, right? You have to have access to nine mana in order to play Sivir and then play Shell Game. Which hurts this card. That's, that hurts this card a lot. Which, you know, I'm fine with. I don't need more elusive sources. I don't need more sources of elusive in my, in my life. So, like, Shell Game, I'm okay with this card being bad. I hope it is bad. Okay. And then we've got Trinket Trade. One mana burst speed, Bandle card, Bandle only. One mana burst, a Manifest, and Otterpus. Or one of two spells from your regions that cost three or less. Okay, so what I found out recently is that the card I was looking at yesterday, Loping Telescope, it says like Manifest, and then it gives like three different options. It's like a low cost Celestial, an Epic, and uh, a, a dual region card. So the way Manifest seems to work is that it will always give you one of each kind of option. So I think that, that that's, that's what I've heard people say. And, and I've heard people say that this is right confirmed. Um, AUCL, who's often in my comment section on these videos, told me that. Thank you. Thank you, AUC, AUCL. Appreciate that. So based on that, I'm going to read this to say when you play Trinket Trade, you were always going to, like, your first option will always be Otterpus, right? So if you want, if you want Otterpus, you can always have it. And then the, ne and then the other two options will be two spells from your regions that cost three or less. So you're always going to get access to an Otterpus off of Trinket Trade. Now, Otterpus is just a card that gives you a prank. And I still don't understand what prank does. Pick one of two non-champion non cards in the enemy's hand or deck and prank it. Alright, let's check Let's check deck.gg. Maybe they've got some more information on prank. They don't. Pick one of two non-champion cards in the enemy's hand 
or deck and prank it. What does prank? What does it mean to prank something? Does it just turn it into a prank? It doesn't just. It doesn't just turn other cards into pranks, do they? Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can go find out what prank does. Oh! The ocean is full of playful tricksters. Bandle City's new spell card prank lets you take a peek at two of your opponent's cards and apply a random negative effect to one of them? So, and we see that two of the options are, one of them is grant negative two power and another one is grant minus one power and can't block. Whoa! Yo, wait, that's so cool! Are those the only two? I don't know. I don't know if those are the only two... Like, debuffs? I've seen people like talking in this on the other side about what the pool of on the on like the comments over here on like what the pool of debuffs is. Is there like minus there's not like it can't be like minus two health. Right? It can't be like Cause then like certain units would die, right? If there was something that said get like grant minus two health and it was River Shaper, River Shaper would just die <laughs> when it gets played, so you probably can't do that. I wonder what other debuffs there are, if there are, or if these are like the only two. All the comments over here are super negative. Everyone's like, no, I don't like that, I don't like that, that's weird, that's random, that's Hearthstone. I kind of like it! I think this is really cool, I think this is a... This is an interested method, this is an interesting method of interactivity that we haven't had yet in this game. It really screws over certain, certain combo strategies and, and kind of answers the meta that we have right now, right? It can't hit champions. Now, now to be fair, if I read Prank correctly, non-champion cards in the enemy's deck. One of two non-champion cards. It doesn't say it has to hit followers. Ooh. Ooh, so mana, mana debuffs are probably happening as well, right? If this can target spells, and it says it can, right? Pick one of two non-champion cards. So in theory, it can hit landmarks, it can hit spells. Um, probably another option is going to be, like, this card costs one more mana. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, this really, really disrupts combo strategies. If you're going up against like a true mid-range deck, they probably won't care, right? Or like an aggro deck. Well, an aggro, get, an aggro deck might care a little bit if you start nerfing the power of their units, but probably that's not going to be efficient enough. Maybe, I don't know. It says, in the enemy's hand or deck. Let's you take a pick of two of your opponent's cards. So do you get to pick if it's in their hand or deck? I mean, if you get to pick, you'll always pick hand, right? Like, it's always better to mess up a card in someone's hand. A bird in the, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? So I assume it's random. Like, sometimes you'll randomly get a shot at a card in someone's hand. If you can hit the hand, this card becomes very good. If you just hit the deck, it starts not mattering. Right, because sometimes they just will never draw the card that you pranked. I like this. I actually, I actually really like this. I think prank is hilarious. I think it's really fun. And, and combo strategies like, like Sivir decks and, and decks that rely heavily on certain cards. Like River Shaper is a great example, right? This just screws over River Shaper. A River Shaper with minus two power, it can't strike. And then it can't draw, it can't draw cards. That's incredible, right? That's a mate that that just shuts that deck down entirely if you do that. <laughs> Which could be toxic, I guess. I've seen a lot of people say that like this is toxic, this is bad. They don't like prank. I like it. I think it's fun. I 
I I think this rewards people who know how their opponent's deck works. Like knowing that knowing how heavily your opponent relies on River Shaper and like pranking it. Now, that being said, the fact that the debuffs seem to be random, it seems to be kind of like Lab of Legends where this grant minus two power is tied to River Shaper. It's not like you can pick, oh, Green Glade Caretaker and minus two. You can't pick, oh, River Shaper and Camp Block. You 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 like these are glued together. So like if River Shaper does get minus two power, that's fantastic. But if he happens to roll like cost one costs one more mana or yeah, one power and can't block, like suddenly suddenly like the prank becomes a lot worse and more inconsistent. And sometimes, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be like, yes, I pranked the River Shaper and it got minus two power, and your opponent's gonna be like, oh come on! They got the they 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 happen to roll minus two power. You know it's gonna feel bad for them. So this is a bit random. It is a bit RNG, and that's gonna make some feels bad scenarios. I just I <laughs> yesterday I just uh, lost the season. I, I I fell out of the seasonal tournament because of you know in a not not I'm not gonna blame RNG entirely, but a large reason of a large part of why I lost a couple of my games was due to. RNG mechanics, I missed a couple allegiances, my opponent my opponent nabbed the one card from my deck that mattered, right? And stuff like that. So I understand at the competitive level why people might not like these. We'll have to see, we'll have to see, but I'm not ready to write it off yet. I'm not ready to say that this kind of effect is bad or terrible for the game. I want to give it a shot. I think, I think it's really cool. I think it allows for some really cool decision making and some some really fun games. I'm hyped for it. But but I do acknowledge that this could be the type of thing that uh, hurts hurts the competitive integrity of the game. All right. So now that I know, so now that I understand what the heck prank does, we can go back and look at these other cards that deal with it. So prank prank is pretty cool. It's it costs 1 mana and probably that effect is almost definitely worth that mana, right? Being able to... Being able to, like... Massively hinder... Like, potentially hinder... A... a an important card in your opponent's deck. That is definitely worth one mana. So this... This is something I want to get. These are... These are things that are desirable. I don't know if they're this desirable, though, right? Four mana for a 4-3. Like, paying one extra mana... For a Merciless Hunter with no keywords just so you can get access to two pranks. Is that worth it? I don't think so, unless you really, really need like the spell triggers. That, that's the other thing about prank is that this is like a fizz, this is like a fizz card and fizz, you know, synergizes with cheap spells. So these are like ways to activate fizz is elusive. This is like ways to activate fizz getting elusive, right? and like level him up and all that sort of thing. In addition to all the <laughs> all the mean things you do to your opponent's deck. Um But is it worth a 4 mana 4/3 four, with no keywords to put two of them in your hand? I don't I don't imagine so. I don't imagine that it is. I don't see I don't see Benenemy going into your into your deck although maybe it is consistent right there's nothing your opponent can do you just that you just get the pranks kelp maidens uh prank what i now know about prank does not change my assessment of kelp maidens this is a two mana two one elusive that doesn't do anything until it strikes this card could be good in certain metas but it'll have to be metas where stuff like make it rain stuff like parlay stuff like go hard Stuff like Vile Feast don't exist. It has to be a meta, and also and also enemy elusives, right? Because if your opponent also like plays a Teemo, and you play Kelp Maidens, well, then you'll kill Teemo. Is that worth it? Maybe. Like that's that that could maybe go even. So like we'll we'll, we'll ditch the elusive thing, but like you have to be in a meta where your opponent won't run Parlay, they won't run Make It Rain, they won't run Red Card, which is you know just builds water, but they also won't won't run Go Hard or Vile Feast. Mystic Shot isn't great either. Like, at least Mystic Shot is 2 mana for 2 mana, but still, you'd rather hit them. So, like, Static Shock. I can't see a meta. I don't see a meta in, w in which Kelp Maidens 
gets played onto and actually like connects ever. Like, like this should never hit the Nexus. This should never hit the Nexus. <laughs> this, should, this should always die before it hits the Nexus. And so it's just a two mana two one. So like, I'm sorry, Kelp Maidens, you're cool. And I think the pranks, if you, if you could strike with this card, it would be well worth it. Even once one strike with this card would make this card worth it. But playing two, paying two mana for something that just dies for one mana or less is probably not worth it. So that's a shame. Otterpus, on the other hand, looks like the prank card. Otterpus looks like the premier prank card. This is essentially a zero mana 1-1. One, one. Right? Because it's a 1-1 one, one with a tune. That Then you can just play the prank on round one if you wanted. Uh, you probably won't. You probably won't actually just play the prank on, on round one. You probably are going to like save it for Fizz. They're probably gonna like save it to activate. Oh God, Lee Sin. L dare I say it? Activate Lee Sin, please God no. But like, or like Eye of the Dragons. Oh God, these are all Eye of the Dragon support. Oh God, Prank is definitely Eye of the Dragon support. I hope that deck doesn't exist. I don't want to see an. I don't want to see no Ionia Bandle deck come out of this with pranks. That would be gross. But like in a Fizz deck, it would make sense. Yeah, Otterpus is gonna be the good one. I'm, I'm calling it now. Otter, Otterpus is gonna be the one you want. Okay, Shark Chainer is Shark Chainer is unchanged. I still don't think this card is very good. It's just too expensive, and the fact that you have to spend one spell mana to summon the the Short Tooths just seems just seems so yeah so expensive. It's just too expensive. Trixie Tentacles looks great. I think like I think this card's gonna be really good. It never misses. The big difference between this and Hunt the Week, like I said before, is that Hunt the Week sometimes whiffs, and Trixie Tentacles should never whiff. It'll always get some sort of value. We'll have to test with it. We'll have to test it. I still don't know if just discarding a card from your hand to make your opponent do the same is worth mana. Like, I'm not sure it's worth two mana and discarding a card from your hand, which is Trixie Tentacles, right? Trixie Tentacles forces you to discard essentially itself. And in exchange, your opponent also discards their lowest cost card. I don't know if that's worth mana, right? Because you're paying two mana to lose a card and your opponent's paying zero mana to lose a card. But it could be. The, the, it could be worth mana here if you get a good enough card, right? If you make your opponent discard a good card or if they're just out of cards, it'll be worth it. We'll have to, we'll have to test it. Shell game, I don't really see. There could certain strategies probably will will need this and so they'll run this anyway but this is like a very bad version of Sumpworks map this is like the worst this is like the worst ghost <laughs> right this is like the worst copy of ghost we've seen yet but some strat some bandle strategies that don't run ionia will be like yes i need a bad ghost please give me the worst ghost you have it's better than nothing you know like so like this might see some play but it is bad it is a bad ghost the worst ghost. And then Trinket Trade. One mana burst speed manifest in Otterpus. I imagine this is going to see a lot of play. In certain decks. I imagine this this is going to see a lot of play in certain spell based bandle decks. Oh god, I'm getting I'm getting some Lee Sin slash Eye of the Dragon vibes from Trinket Trade and from Otterpus, right? Because Trinket Trade is a spell that creates, that can always create an Otterpus, and the Otterpus always creates another spell, right? So Trinket Trade is a one mana burst speed spell that creates another one mana focus speed spell in your hand. Or, or one of two other spells from your regions that cost three or less, right? So Trinket Trade creates, a, creates either an Otterpus, which creates a prank, or it creates another spell from your regions that costs three or less. Yeah, yeah, this is this has got Eye of the Dragon written all over it. I really hope we see a nerf to that card before uh, before all this nonsense. I was excited, okay. I was excited about Prank before I realized that Prank is just an Eye of the Dragon card. I'm not excited for Eye of the Dragon to get new tools. I want Fizz to get new tools, not Eye of the Dragon to get new tools. But yeah. Trinket Trade looks really good. It's really, it's like, 
if even if you whiff the other two, even if like the other two spells are complete dog, even if they're like the two worst cards you've ever seen, you can always just take Otterpus. So it's like the 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 floor on this card is always just making an Otterpus, and that's always gonna be good. Cause Otterpus is also good. <laughs> I think I think Otterpus also is just a good card that you'll probably want to run in certain decks. But yeah. I'm not excited for the Eye of the Dragon support, but outside of like that sort of deck, these actually look fun. These look fun as heck. I wanna I wanna play the heck out of these cards. Alright. Those are my initial impressions. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that prank is gonna be like disgustingly toxic? Do you think it'll see play only in Lee Sin decks? Eye of the Dragon decks? Uh dare I say it, Karma decks? Or do you think that like Fizz, like a Fizz Bandal deck will actually exist? And then yeah, let me know what you guys think. Did I miss anything else important? What do you think of Prank? Let me know down in the comments. And I will see you guys tomorrow for whatever they reveal tomorrow. Hopefully we eventually get a champion. This is like the fifth day in a row where we've got no champions. Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll get a champion in our, in our reveal. But until then, I'll keep doing these videos. See you guys. See you guys tomorrow.